You know, there are many dark spiritual forces in our world that seek to destroy the life of a Christian. They come at us in so many different ways, hitting health, finances, friends and family, relationships, how we think and feel, uh, all the way to our workspaces and places. The reality is Christians brush up against dark spiritual forces and a conflict with dark spiritual forces all the time. Many people feel overcome by these forces. They feel overwhelmed by the darkness that seeks to encroach on their life. And yet I'm here to tell you today, my friends, that this doesn't have to be the case. See, I prayed this video would find you so that you would come to the realization that the devil cannot beat you because the devil is already being defeated. See, as the Christian, as the believer, we are a giant in the spiritual realm. If only we can realize the truth of what we have in Christ. We have been given spiritual armor and spiritual tools to use. Our weapons of our warfare are powerful in the Lord, not carnal, able to tear down strongholds of the enemy. In Ephesians chapter 6, this chapter that Paul writes to us as Christians shows us the tools and the power that we have in Christ to destroy and stand against the spiritual forces that seek to destroy our lives and stop the gospel from spreading through us. And so we are going to dive into Ephesians chapter 6 today. And through this chapter, we are going to see the truth behind the armor of God and the spiritual weapons that we have to wage good warfare as we deal with the evil in our world. And I would encourage you, stick with me to the end of this video, because at the end of this video, Paul reveals a secret to spiritual warfare. At the end of this scripture, he reveals this, that most Christians neglect in putting on their armor and dealing with spiritual forces. See, Paul writes, finally, brothers, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of God the devil. For our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against rulers of darkness in this world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Something that will unlock your life to walk in joy, to walk in peace, to walk in patience, to walk in the fullness of the power of God is the realization that when you brush up against evil, you're not necessarily just dealing with people, but you are dealing with dark spiritual powers. See, when I walk out into life and I come to understand that there are dark spiritual forces around me seeking to destroy me, I can begin to see my world, my life, from a new perspective. Even in the area of our health and our healing, so many people pray for healing, but what they don't realize is the devil desires you not to be healed. So many people, they pray for finances, yet they don't realize the devil desires to destroy your finances and tempt you with greed and mammon. They deal with issues with co-workers or family members where there's backbiting and slandering and all of these things and they think they're dealing with people but what they're brushing up against is the evil force behind them. Finally, brothers, be strong in the Lord in the strength of his might. But what we need to realize and see is the way that we overcome things like sickness brought on by the enemy, the way that we overcome the destruction that would desire to take out and destroy our families, destroy our friends, our families, our relationships, our churches, is not through our energy and effort, is not through our attempts, through the natural means of life to win in the ground of the spirit, but is through the strength and might of the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. See, the Christian, dear friend, we need to realize something, and this is the key to most of this, is that there is strength and power in the Lord that we are called to be strong in. See, most people try and deal with the forces of evil and darkness through their own strength. But when we see Ephesians chapter 6, the whole armor of God comes, and it's about His power in us and through us, not about my might or my strength, but about His strength and His power in me and through me. And I access that strength by putting on the armor of God. It enables me to stand 
against dark, demonic, wicked forces and schemes, wild, secret plans of the enemy. See, the plans of the enemy are not overt a lot of the time. They're not in our face, but they come into our life in stages to destroy. And we need to understand that the enemy isn't just attacking, but scheming, plotting over the course of years the destruction of the believer. When I understand that there is a dark spiritual force out there that desires to destroy me, I am more ready to put on my armor, knowing that if I put on the armor of God, I will stand and win against the dark spiritual forces. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist the evil day, having done all to stand. See, the key to spiritual warfare, the key to victory in healing, the key to victory in, uh, in family, in relationships, is to wear the armor of God, to wear the armor of God, and to stand in the armor. See, it's not enough just to put on the armor as we'll walk through, but it's more important that when I put it on, that I stand in the armor and I never take it off. See, the enemy will work so hard as we go through each piece of the armor and each piece is your key. Each piece, it matters to your victory over the powers of darkness, but the devil will work strategically to try and make it so that you take off each piece of the armor so you become vulnerable. But when you wear the armor of God and you never remove it and you never take it off and you stand as a holy one in Christ Jesus covered in the blood ministered to by the Holy Spirit empowered in his name, you stand in that, he will have no place in your life. Your victory your victory in Christ, your victory in the Lord is through keeping on the armor and standing still. See, the action of spiritual victory is not a progression forward, but a standing in the victory that's already yours. Notice that through the armor of God, I don't take ground from the enemy, but I stand in the ground that Jesus has already taken. I don't go to try and retrieve areas of my life that the devil has taken because truth be told in Christ Jesus, there is already the victory in every area of life. The key is I believe the promise and through the armor, I stand in the victory of Christ and I do not move. I do not waver and I do not back off. And when I do that in my life actively and I never move away from it, that is when the victory of Jesus begins to move into tangible, real areas of my world. It's when healing starts to take place. It's when uh, my mental health begins to change and anxiety and fear leaves me. It's when I no longer react the same to my coworkers that call me names because I stand in the victory of Christ in the love of his heart. Stand therefore. We are going to go through each and every piece of the armor and we're going to deep dive into all of these pieces and what they mean for you. And as you come to see each piece of the armor, you are going to come to understand how to walk in your victory in a way you've never walked in it before. Hear this, stand therefore having girded up your waist with truth. What's amazing is that the belt of truth, the belt of a Roman soldier held the whole armor together. The revelation of truth is your key to holding up your victory. You must know the truth. Jesus taught in John chapter 8 that they will know my, if you stand in my word, then you are truly my disciple. And if you know my word, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The key to your freedom, your deliverance, your standing in the victory of Christ is the truth revealed through the word of God and the gospel of your salvation. See, when you understand that the blood of Jesus was enough, that there are promises in God that are true and righteous and good and for you, and when you see your promise, when you see his promise, when you see that you are one filled with the Holy Spirit and power, that you're anointed and loved by your Father, and no one can separate you from the love of God, and you stand in truth, then you will recognize the lie before it even gets to you. 
See, when I saturate my heart and my mind in the truth of the Word of God every day, and I speak it over my life every day, even that's why last week we created a video about a hundred scriptures for healing, because we want to saturate ourselves in the truth of the Word of God. That's what we want to do. When we know the truth, we stand in a way that's girded up, and then we recognize the lie, and we're able to move past it, and we find that the schemes and lies of the devil can no longer have root. Do you know the truth? Have you taken time to understand and see the truth of the Word of God and how real the gospel is? Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, one of the primary ways the devil is going to attack you is through this word called condemnation. Condemnation is different than conviction. Conviction will enable you to leave your sin behind. It'll convict your heart and say, go this way instead. Condemnation will say God doesn't love you and doesn't care for you and you're the worst because of your sin. They're very different. Don't confuse them. See, the enemy will try and take off the breastplate of righteousness through two strategies. And these are key. If you recognize these two strategies, you will always wear the breastplate of righteousness. The first strategy is he will try and convince you He will try and convince you that you are not righteous in Christ Jesus. He'll try and deceive you into that the blood of Jesus wasn't enough and that you are still just a dirty, rotten, no good, nothing sinner and that you are not a saint in Christ and you're not holy, you're not blameless. And he'll try and condemn your life and he'll get you into this mindset where you believe that you are not righteous and that you believe things like, why would God ever love me? Or why would God ever want to heal me of my sickness, of my disease? Why would God ever want to see my mental health made whole? We ask and we see all of these questions and yet it all comes down to the enemy trying to get us to take off the breastplate of righteousness. But when I understand the blood of Jesus was enough for me, that it cleansed all my sin, and as far as the east is from the west, so has he removed my transgressions from me. When I understand that the righteousness of Christ was imputed to me, and I don't stand righteous in my own effort, but because of him, then I never take off the breastplate of righteousness, and his words fall short, because it is not through my strength that I am righteous, but through his blood alone. The second way the enemy is going to get you to take off the breastplate of righteousness is he's going to try and tempt you into sin. See, righteousness is both a position and an action. It's a position that changes your action. This is the truth of righteousness. When I understand that grace is enough for me and power is made perfect in weakness, when I understand that the grace of God covers me and enables me to renounce ungodliness and embrace His truth of righteousness that is upon me, when I consider myself dead to sin and alive to God, then my life begins to change. And yet the enemy comes along and he knows our buttons. He knows the spots in our heart and our mind that tend to pull us into sin. And he will poke those again and again and again. There are going to be issues in your life that you have left behind. And yet for whatever reason, these issues seem to come back up and you sit there and you wonder, why is this sin continuing to persistly tempt me when I've laid it down and I've walked away from it? It's because the enemy knows your buttons. He knows where to push. He knows where to come at you. This even happens in physical healing. People get healed of a certain issue and they know they're healed. They know their body and then the issue tries to come back on them. It tries to come back and overtake them. But friends, we need to stand and believe, no, I will not go back to my sickness. I will not go back in and give it in. He's healed me and set me free. Or no, I will not go back to my sin. Jesus Christ has redeemed me from the pit and I stand righteous by the blood of Jesus. Having your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. There's a readiness that comes from peace. The gospel brings peace. It brings shalom. That's or irene. That's what that word means in the Greek. It, it is in the Greek. It's a, it's a peace in your whole world. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding, that guards my heart and mind in Christ Jesus, gives me a readiness, not only for heaven, but also for life. See, I'm not striving in life to try and have peace with God. Instead, I'm walking in peace that changes my world. See, the devil wants nothing more than to believe, than for you to believe that you are still seeking peace with God. 
But the reality is you have peace with God through Christ Jesus. Simply believe. Believe in the peace. Believe in the relationship. Peace with God and peace with your fellow man. Know the truth and the truth will set you free. And then he says this, and this is so important. Above all, taking up the shield of faith with which you are able to extinguish all the fiery arrows of the evil one. Notice how in this passage he says above all. In no other section, no other piece of armor does he say above all, but he says above all these other pieces of armor, you must bring up your shield of faith. See, faith is a tool. Faith is a position to believe all that God has said about you. To believe the gospel. To believe in Him. And I take up the shield of faith. And when the enemy's lies come at me and his schemes come into my world to destroy and tear down and rip apart, the shield of faith is my faith in Him to say no to the scheme and to stand in the truth. I stand by the shield of faith and I put out every dart. See, when I know things like by his stripes, I am healed, that when sickness comes at me, I stand and I raise my shield of faith. No, by his stripes, I'm healed. When I know that Jesus wants me to walk in the fruit of the Spirit, in anger uh, towards my fellow man, in a, in a sinful way comes over me, or I'm tempted to lie and, and cheat and steal, or whatever it could be, I stand by the shield of faith and I say, no, I will not. When gossip wants to come out of my lips and it feels like it's coming from the deepest core of who I am to spread these things, I can stand and take up the shield of faith knowing that that's a demonic thing coming at me and say, no, I will not gossip in the name of Jesus, but I will speak well of my fellow man and I will bless them with my lips and I will only speak that which is good for building others up. The shield of faith is so powerful that every dart of the enemy will be extinguished when you wield it. God has given you a shield of faith. Use your shield of faith. Stand with the faith taken up that when something comes at your life, you see the word of God and you stand and you know and you believe and you thank and you don't ever budge and don't ever be bullied or lose your heart for Christ. Don't let life tempt you out of seeking the Lord, out of seeking His face. Instead, every single day, stand before your living God and know that the Lord has your life in His hands. And He's for you. And He is not against you. Take up the shield of faith. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. See, I know I am saved by the blood of Jesus. I am saved, healed, delivered, set free by His blood. But I also take up the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is the sword in the Spirit. It cleaves through the deepest, darkest, horrible things. It's the only part of my armor that is offensive. It's the only part that is used to attack. When I speak the word of God over my life, when I meditate on the word of the Lord, I am actively carving away and cleaving the actions of the principalities and the dark powers around me that desire to destroy my life. When I pray the Psalms of the Lord, Psalm 103, Psalm 91, Psalm 127, uh, Psalm 121, Psalm chapter 1, when I pray powerful Psalms like the ones that I listed, and I pray those over my life, the Lord begins to move and cleave the powers of darkness. That's even why we're starting up a new type of video where we pray the Psalms and teach the Psalms because the Psalms are a powerful tool in the word of the Lord to cleave away the powers of darkness. I ask you to subscribe and stick with us here at The Prayer Project because this is going to empower you to walk in the sword of the Spirit. Pray the word, speak the word, believe the word, know the word, and you will see the powers of darkness cut away from your life and the light of life that is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in you begin to shine. And now for the final part of this armor, the final tool that most people miss at the very end. It says, pray in the Spirit always with all kinds of prayers and supplication. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Speak in tongues over your life. Pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let Him guide your prayers. But pray in the Spirit with all kinds of prayers and supplications, with thanksgiving. Pray to the end that for the preservation of all the saints. Pray 
over your life. Pray for your church. Pray for your city. Let prayer be constant in the Lord. Speak in tongues because when we do these things, we invite the activity of God into our life. Through your prayers, through praying, you invite the move of the Holy Spirit into your world. See, it may seem like the powers and principalities around you are too much to walk out, too much to overcome, but the truth and reality is, through Jesus Christ, you have already overcome them. Now, some of you, you feel like the activity of God in your life, even healing, divine healing, things like that are blocked. That there's something going on in the spirit that's keeping that from coming into your world. If you feel like that at all, I would encourage you, watch this video right here. I pray for people that they would come and see this video because this is going to empower us to receive all that God has for us. I want to see you over there in that video. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless.